Hey friend, in this video, I'm showing you a very quick flow state abstract landscape painting. I've been painting landscapes like this and showing them on my Instagram over the past few months and people are freaking out. They want to see more, <laughs> uh, but they're so fun and so visually appealing. And I show you my color palette process from choosing the colors that I do reference photos and how to do this like blocked abstract abstract, abstract, Matisse vibe, flowy, more adjectives, adjectives, uh, landscape. So if you are ready to paint something that's really painterly, flowy, strokey, vibey, uh, landscape times, then let's dive in. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been really into this landscape vibe recently. It's very fun, loose, strokey, um, and posting a lot about it on Instagram, Instagram, and everyone, everybody in the world is saying, oh my gosh, teach me your ways. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm also getting asked how I come up with the color palettes. So I will do that, I will show that. So one of these, this is a, I pulled up a photo of the Oregon coastline and saw this and I wanted to paint it. And this is Julia Pfeiffer State Park in Big Sur. One of my favorite places, Big Sur, California. Love it. Um, painted it. So it's kind of like a visual journal, if you will. And then it looks really pretty. And I'm gonna use these for some art prints that I have coming out with a good, fun collab. Okay, so my approach is we're gonna paint um, Pebble Beach. This is Pebble Beach. I found this photo on Pinterest and I liked it. We're gonna be painting different colors though. So my approach, what I'm gonna show you is, it looks really simple. However, a lot of you um, are gonna be like, oh my gosh, why does mine look like blobs or look dumb? <laughs> uh, not dumb, you get it though. Uh, and it's because we need to do a couple steps first. So what I do first is I find a photo, a reference photo of some view of a landscape that I like or that I've taken myself. And I don't really look for the colors that I want. So if it happens to have the colors that I, that I wanna use, then great. Um, but this one is a little too cloudy. The reds, I'm not gonna use reds. I'm gonna use kind of like pinky reds and coral colors and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you my process for colors soon. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint sections. So we have like, for example, um, sections of interesting focal points, like the ocean is here, the sky is here, the cliffs with the redwood trees are back here, and then our foreground is here. It's kind of grassy, and then it's a pebbly beach. Um, and along with that, so we have our one main triangle section in the front that's gonna have our flowers. We have what appears to be dead yellow flowers here in the foreground, I'm gonna make those not dead. They're gonna be bright yellow flowers and they're kind of curving in the front. And then the other direction is gonna be like this corally grass situation. And then we have a little peak of sand. That's another section, our peak of ocean. I might do the sky. And then we have some cliff and rock texture. I'm gonna add in a couple of palm trees because I love painting palm trees with this loose style or some sort of tree, some sort of height uh, would be nice. So I'm gonna paint those palm trees first and then kind of go from there. Uh, so this is very like kind of, if you've ever seen the landscape Matisse did, um, Henry Matisse did, the famous artist, uh, kind of Matisse-esque with my own interpretation. So I'm gonna be using my size six brush the whole time and referencing my reference photo. And I'm gonna start with laying out my color palette first. And what I'm thinking for this, we're in Pebble Beach here. So we've got California coastline again. I definitely want that yellow ochre. Um, I have no color palette in mind when I start, usually, um, unless I'm trying to follow a specific color palette. Here's some white gouache. Um, I know I want some yellow ochre. I might want a really soft peach color. So once I get my first two swatches down, I kind of pull out theory. So orange's complementary color is blue. What kind of blue do I want in contrast and why? Do I want a really bright turquoise blue or a really muted, soft, smoky blue?
So once I get these colors down, we're really gonna know the feeling we're going for here. So I got yellow ochre and a touch of white gouache. And then I know I wanna mix cadmium orange, white gouache, and opera rose for a peachy color. And I want to build into that red, but it's not gonna be red red. It's gonna be more of like a corally red. That's a nice freaking color. That was opera rose, yellow ochre, and white gouache. So now I'm gonna use that base for my, the orange that I just, or the peach that I just mixed up. And I'm gonna add Scarlet Lake to it. Let's bring it up here. Scarlet Lake, Cadmium Orange, and Opera Rose. Just a touch, a touch of white gouache. If you don't have white gouache, no worries. Um, I've just been on a white gouache kick lately and I like how creamy it makes my paints. Yeah, I like layering with it, but you can do this with just pure watercolor. Um, your colors will be more transparent than mine, but it, it's all good. Okay, so I love the direction this is going. We've got a gold color, a peach color, and like this really cool reddish pink. Um, now we need to add in more, more to the story. We need some greens, we need some blues. So obviously in this reference photo, we have a like overcast smoky vibe. I could go that direction with a smoky light blue. Um, I could go for a brighter direction, but I think what I'm going to do is somewhere in between. I might actually use this, this light blue color and then a darker blue color. Um, so we're gonna do cobalt blue. If I were to go the smoky direction with these brighter colors, that would be my grounding element. So I would only do one or a small amount of it because it's a different emotion and vibe than what I've got here with these three colors. So we're gonna do cobalt blue and white gouache and a touch of manganese blue, a little more white. It's very nice. So we're moving through. This needs some like yellow green, some greens, sap green, Lemon yellow deep and white gouache. Lots of lemon yellow deep though for this first to really cut these colors. We want to cut it and make it bright. Very nice. And now let's bring it down to earth and get some of these darker brown tones for the cliffies moments, the cliffy moments. So I've got burnt umber. Mars black. Let's really build that up. And touch a white wash, not to really lighten it, but just to make it like creamy. A little more color and some red to tie it in with these peachy colors and red colors. more red. Very nice. 
I might also add turquoise to it because I just want to. And there's little peaks of that turquoise in there already. So just using what's left, barely left of my manganese blue. So this is like my alternative blue that I can use here. We ran out of space, but we're just gonna put it there. And who knows, I might use Opera Rose too. And I'm really getting crazy using all the colors. That looks nice. So I'm kind of testing out how things look together before just going for it. What does Opera Rose and Cadmium Orange look mixed together? Ooh, that's nice. Some options. <laughs> So I'm gonna start with a cluster of palm trees. That's my tall height in the piece. That's my height in the piece in the foreground. And then I'm gonna do that foreground like triangle section over here and then work my way back. And then come back to the foreground and see if I wanna add any more details. So the whole time I'm gonna be using my size six brush and I'm gonna have a higher up grip on the handle of the brush so that I can really feel that flow with the connection of my arm to the brush and on the paper. So I'm staying really loose and we're gonna start with the palm trees. So I'm gonna grab my yellow, yellow, green mixture, really bright yellow, green. And if you need stability, you can put your, rest, uh, your free hand down as a fist. And all I'm gonna do is with a mostly vertical hold, Press and loop in, maybe lighten for some of these palm branches. Press, loop in. Palm tree, branches, I mean leaves. And another one, We're staying really loose and abstract. Still applying all the principles I teach on this channel, like wet and wet. I'm gonna do the yellow ochre for the trunks of these. So it's not so dark and light with the dark brown. So we're gonna go ahead and point. In and out. In and out trees. <laughs> All right, and so then from here, I'm gonna paint these yellow flowers in the foreground over here. And what I'm doing as I'm referencing the, the reference photo, you know, when you make your eyes go blurry and you can only see like blobs of color and shape. So the shape of these, which are going to become yellow flowers are kind of curving this way. And then we have this grassy stuff kind of poking up this way. And then the ocean goes in a straight line like this. We have jagged cliffs with these types of strokes. So all I'm doing is like seeing the sections, blurring my eyes and seeing blobs of color and um, direction, stroke direction. So all I'm gonna do is float around with my yellow for these little blobs using the side of my brush. Maybe getting some small ones over here. Coming up the right side of Tad. And then we'll grab green, green, yellow. Let's do some of that red now. Poking in, we've got, I'm gonna flick down with my brush like this. Add in that red. And green in between. So 
So each section has a specific direction that it's following. These are kind of like swooping up with the wind. Now we're gonna bring that down with some of our burnt umber. Make it more, more earthy feeling. We're gonna have some section here too. Let's see, we can use, what is the look in our color palette? Peach. Just giving it that flowy, windswept feel. And that peach is gonna be right before our ocean color, which is gonna be a really nice contrast because it's almost orange. And then we're gonna have blue. But first we're gonna have that golden sand color poking through. I'm just gonna poke in the sand, looking at the overall direction that the sand is going and grabbing manganese blue with our white gouache. And now this cobalt blue and white gouache mixture. I'm just trying to make it an even rectangle now. So I'm not really following the reference, like direction that the strokes are going or the waves, I mean. Now we're just kind of like, if we were given guidelines and we were doing some like coloring in the lines type of thing, we're just kind of visualizing these being lines. I want to poke in more peach over here. Now I'm going to do some bright pinks just off a rose. I want some darker greens in this grass. So I'm grabbing sap green, maybe some Prussian blue. Now just adding fun bits for movement. And rocks, let's do burnt umber, Mars black. We're gonna add just our slant strokes for these cliffs, these rocks. Just references.
and contrast with black. Now that most of the colors are laid down, I'm gonna go back over the palm tree leaves and add some more sap green to them so that they really pop. Just going on top, making them darker. Now that all my colors are settling in, I can see that these need to stand out more. And one final step, we are going to do a fun color on these trunks. And let's just do this. I'm gonna go on top of the tree trunks and just go bloop, 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 bloop. And same thing on the other one. Very nice touch okay. on the trees. Thank you. There you go. Wow, the, the trunk detail really kind of... Pop. It kind of just tied it all together like a nice rug. <laughs> now we're just gonna more yellows, more peaches, fill her in. Make this like, boom, wildflowers on the beach. Fill in this up here. And there you go. You don't want to overdo it too much. That's the whole point. It's supposed to look very loose and just give you an instant. I know exactly what this looks like or what this is. It's a beach scene with some flowers, but it's not giving away too much. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had fun. Let me know in the comments below what do your what landscape you're going to try this on. Are you going to try this? You know, maybe you have an, an idea in mind of a location that you want to pull up in Google images, or you have an image of a nearby spot by your house or something. Let me know in the comments below if it's a public place that we can all look up reference photos for. I would love to know it so I can paint it and other people might want to paint it too. So drop it in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, subscribe to our channel, like this video, turn on notifications, all of those things help us boost this channel into more people's faces. Uh, get it into in front of more people's eyeballs, which we love because we put in so much hard work and effort into these videos, the filming, the editing, the teaching, all of it. So thank you so much if you are a subscriber, if you are commenting and are liking and all of that, because it means the world. I'll see you in the next video.